Would you like to make takeoffs like a boss instead of a wet noodle? Do you think it just has to do with practicing a lot? Well, it doesn't. It's something else. You need to find your takeoff mojo. And that is exactly what we're going to do today. Welcome to Flight Coach. My name is Bas van Duin and it is my mission to help you get more out of life and your flying career through less stress and more skills. In this episode, we're going to talk about how to find your takeoff mojo. What mindset do you need to make those great takeoffs? And I can tell you, it doesn't have everything to do with skill. Skill is part of it, but mindset is way more important. Now there are a lot of videos on YouTube and I can recommend that you watch a few of them about how to make proper takeoffs. And they mainly focus on the technical part of doing a paraglider launch. This video will not be about the technical part, well maybe a little bit, but it will mainly be about the mindset. In this episode we're going to start off by watching a bit of video footage of takeoffs that I found on YouTube. Yay! Now to start off with a little disclaimer, the way YouTube works with copyright means that me and any other content creator can use material that we find on YouTube for like review purposes. And that's what we're going to do today. So I want to make very clear that the clips that I will be using in this video are parts that I found on YouTube and that I did not create myself. I will also provide credit for the people that posted the stuff in the expectations that they were the original content creators. Now we're going to start off with a little compilation of takeoffs that I would place in the category bad until very bad to horrendously bad. If you're watching these videos and think, well, I can't seem to find anything wrong with these takeoffs, they all look quite fine to me, don't worry, don't feel bad about yourself. It just means that there's quite a lot of potential for you to learn from this episode as well. And while you're watching these videos, please ask yourself, what is the common denominator? What is the thing that you see all the pilots do, or maybe omit, that causes these takeoffs to end up the way that they are? One of the services that Flight Coach provides is analyzing your takeoff and landing footage and giving you a few points to improve upon. And I'm feeling a bit sad that in this specific episode we're not having two-way communications because I would really love to know what you're thinking now, what your response would be while you're watching these different kinds of takeoffs. that I would place in the category good till superb and ask yourself the same question what is it that all these pilots do that make these takeoffs look this way
groups of takeoffs. I'm first going to point out a few things that you might think, but that are not true or are not the essence. For instance, you might say, yeah, the pilots with the proper takeoffs, those are the guys that have a lot of skill, a lot of experience. Well, that isn't true. In my experience, it's actually the opposite. People that have just learned how to fly, have just gone through flight school, generally make better and smoother and more controlled takeoffs than the people that have more experience. Another thing you might say is that it has to do with the takeoff conditions. The weather, the slope, well, it's always quite easy to blame the conditions, but that's not the case here either. And the last point you might think about is that the people making the proper takeoffs have a lot more ground handling skills. Well, I may agree with you on that for most of these takeoffs, that they probably indeed have better ground handling skills. But that is not the essence why their takeoffs are better. So if any of these points were actually your answer, your only answer, then I would highly recommend you rewind a bit. I will leave a timestamp link in the description down below to go back and watch the videos again and see if you come up with a different answer. I'll just wait here. Ah, so you're back. Or maybe you did not rewind at all and think you have the answer already. The thing is speed or lack thereof. The better takeoffs are all very relaxed, very almost lazy, and the other takeoffs that are bad look rushed. A proper takeoff looks like someone is gently pulling up the glider, either forward or reverse launch, and is just taking a stroll down the takeoff, slowly accelerating, walking into the air. And a poor takeoff looks like someone rushing wanting to get it over with so he or she can go flying. If you've had proper flight training, then you have learned that there is a go, no go decision in every launch, whether it be forward or the reverse launch. So anyone can use this skill, this tool. Why do so many people leave this tool in their toolbox? I think it is due to their mindset. They just need to find their takeoff mojo. We are all born with it. And the fact that you're watching this episode now probably means that you have it in abundance because it is one of the things that made you want to go fly. Now it might be somewhere deep down inside of you, but I'm sure that you have it and we're going to find it together in this episode. Because by using the right mindset, you can tap into that takeoff mojo. So, we're talking about mindsets. Let's first start with what I would like to call the wrong mindset. I need to get this takeoff over with so I can finally go flying. Let's do this and hope it goes well. People that have this mindset tend to rush their takeoff. They yank their gliders into the air. It is all very rushed. And maybe one of the most important points, they're not enjoying the takeoff. Now I've taught hundreds of people how to make proper takeoffs with a paraglider. And believe it or not, within the first second, I can see whether or not the takeoff is gonna be a beautiful one or a rushed one. And that's not because I'm so awesome, it's because I know exactly what to look for. And you will too, after watching this entire episode. When I learned paragliding, I also took off like a raging bull. And do you know what it felt like? I have no idea. Because at that point, I was not working on trying to register what I was feeling. I was just focusing on the step of running and exerting force on the glider. And it took me quite some time to learn how to make proper takeoffs. Now one of the defining moments in my phase of learning how to fly was seeing one of my instructors, a guy called Buddy, do a takeoff. And he was standing on the takeoff, there were a lot of people watching, and he pulled his glider up in the air, he was making a reverse launch at that point, he pulled his glider in the air, he checked it, and he let it drop down again. And we were looking at each other, What's happening? And he did that again. And he did that for a third time. And at that point he thought that the glider was standing properly and then he slowly turned towards the valley because he was making a reverse launch and he walked into the air. And from that moment on we started calling that the body takeoff. And it really blew my mind. Even though I had been taught before that there is a thing as a go no go decision that quickly faded away. 
there was a bit of takeoff stress and you tend to want to go through with the takeoff no matter what. And what this guy showed me and what I will never forget is that it is okay to just put the glider down on the ground again. If you think it doesn't look proper or the attitude above your head is not okay, just lower the glider again, just push that reset button that we all have. Another thing that helped me improve my takeoffs, and it was a bit later on, is helping myself realize what exactly is my body feeling at this moment. A few months ago on my Instagram account I published quite an extensive post with a video of me landing somewhere and an explanation of how I deal with the tactile sensations, the feelings. If you would like more in-depth information I can suggest that you check that out. I'll leave a link to my Insta account down below. How nice that you made it this far. Did you realize that YouTube prioritizes offering videos to other viewers based on the amount of watch time, but also the amount of likes that they get? So if you appreciate this episode, please press that like button so you are helping me help others fly with less stress and more skills. So let's talk about the right mindset. First of all, it's very important that you view the takeoff as part of your flight. It's not something that you have to get past to start enjoying flying. So the mindset should be, I'm going to make this takeoff, maybe the most important part of my flight, and I'm going to feel what happens, and I'm going to respond to that, and I'm going to enjoy making this takeoff. See it a bit as a dance, if you will, as a tango together with your paraglider. And if you can't find the uh, rhythm, so to speak, if it does not feel controlled, don't just start running and hope for the best, like 99% of people that make bad takeoffs do. Just push that reset button and try again. Now to get a bit technical, the most important advice I can give you is take it slow. And if you think that you're already taking off really slow, try to take twice as much time when you're making your takeoff. The transition from controlling the glider to accelerating, bringing enough energy into the system to get airborne, that is also something you should do really slowly and gradually. And that doesn't mean that at the end you can't be sprinting, especially when there is no wind at all, but the transitions should all be smooth. The only point you're really moving fast during your takeoff is when you're launching in a zero wind condition. The only thing that's moving fast at that point will be your legs, not your hands. Now let's assume there are two pilots, one very experienced and one very inexperienced, but they both have that right takeoff mindset. Their mojo is strong. There are two main differences between this experienced pilot and this inexperienced pilot launching, while they both have the same mindset. The first thing is the amount of times that they will have to reset, that they will have to drop the glider. For the more experienced pilot, this will probably be quite a bit less than the pilot that has less experience. And the other thing is how smooth their movements look. Now there is nothing wrong with moving like a 60s robot, trying to control your glider. Because you have less experience, your responses will be a bit late, your, the amplitude of your corrections will have to be bigger, so it all just looks a little less smooth. But that is something you can work on. You can fine tune that. What matters is the end result. Only take off with a properly inflated wing that is in a proper attitude above your head with your brakes in a proper position. And then you decide to launch. So I hope you realize now this is independent from skill. This is mindset. And in the end, the takeoffs of both these people will look quite similar. They will look relaxed, they will look controlled, and they will probably look cool. Because this is what Mojo does. Now you go find that Mojo. But before you do, stay tuned. I'm gonna step outside for a minute. And all of a sudden I'm sitting here outside in the beautiful town of Alkmaar with no one less than Luc de Weert. Yes. <laughs> Next week we're going to talk about the fear of flying again from a professional perspective. And what Luc does 
You're gonna see that now. I'm saving half for you cause I got it bad for you. Don't you ever trip about it. We can even passport it. You deserve it. You ain't even gotta ask for it. Life's a marathon and I wouldn't want to fast forward. Uh. And for the love, it was back and forth like tennis. Indy down to Atlanta like every weekend, no matter what we had on the schedule. Progressing with every pedal, momentum at speed of light. I need me like 20 medals, yes. Taking off, yeah, I'll be on my way now. Feel it in the air, cause I'm in a better place now. I never doubt it, no, I never doubt it. If you don't like that, leave it where you found. Break it down, nothing new. Let's say we run the Now that's some scary shit, right? <laughs> Stay tuned. See you next week. See you in the air.